Minister Councillor Asheta Tefera from the Ethiopian Embassy in Canberra. So women are playing a crucial role. How our government understands all these things and that the women issue is a big center. It's crossed the transition plan, democratic and development and political policy agendas. In this regard, my country in the last quarter of century has achieved remarkable outcomes. In women empowerment in politics, health, education, poverty reduction, entrepreneurial and striving to achieve a sustainable development goals. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I believe this today's summit deliberate will generate ideas, experience sharing and knowledge transfer, skill and strength and collaboration and partnership between African women in diaspora and mainland of Africa and other workers address current challenges in counter women in the 19th century. Once again, uh, I would like to seize this opportunity to express my best wish and success for the more noble summit and assure you uh, my full support of my government to advance the outcome of these events. Okay. I thank you. Thank you. So I'm um, just presenting my thank you. I want to talk to you about how I navigated through my struggle by embracing my strengths. African American people are stuck in a crossfire of judgment. I witness African American people, especially African American women, suffocating from these projected burdens. I felt like there was nothing I could do to change the past. So I used our history to motivate me. And I began devising strategies to protect myself from racism. I also decided to love myself and to love my people. Reality too. Commit to being the best in your field at the highest level. I graduated from Howard. I began my career as an IT engineer at IBM. While working for NIH, I subconsciously gathered requirements from a security and prevention standpoint to break test the electronic grant application. Here I was, a young woman, working in an all-male team and feeling like I was not always heard or even respected. So I decided to channel this anxiety into motivation to continue to gain the IT security work experience that I desire for myself. Reality three, strengthen your personal vision. Being a natural competitor inspired me to become the best I could be in the field. The security field will present great career opportunities plus exposure to hacktivism. Eventually, I landed a software requirements engineer position with Booz Allen Hamilton, a firm that has thrived because they're always interested in empowering their employees. Again, I immediately enrolled into the Cybersecurity Technology Graduate Program. Reality four, the benefits of sticking to the plan. It is indeed an ever-evolving dance of grace, diligence, and advancing through my career while mothering two young boys at home. I hope my experience motivates you to pursue your interests, to embrace a lifestyle, to always want to learn, and ultimately realize your dreams through practical work. Reality five, you earn a network of mentors with hard work. I'm going to share with you a framework called Mega Community. A mega community is a public sphere in which business, government, social, I mean civil society deliberately join together around a compelling issue of mutual importance while maintaining their unique priorities. And if you're interested in reading more about this concept, you can um, look at the book. But also, I wanted to give you an example of how mega communities work. So in 2001, local retailers in Harlem were threatened by the chain stores moving into New York. A mega community was formed that brought together local business students, accountants, management consultants to help the retailers regain affordability. This, this approach became a model for a number 
a similar small business initiatives around the nation. Contact information. issues which is affecting 3 million girls every year and 28 countries in Africa traditionally practices FGM. We took our pain together and opened an organization called Afrios Care to help the people in need. What I'm trying to say is don't hide your problems. Tell the people what you are going through and seek for help. And what public health did for me was to open my mind to consider health, not only from a clinical perspective, but also from a social, cultural, economic, historic, as Africans, history. The way you see yourself is the way the world is going to see you. Also at the Center for Leadership and Management, we look at a holistic approach into the health and well-being. Sugar apparently does your brain and your thinking, mm -hmm. and it's actually so addictive. What, what we are going to do is uh, our government find out uh, rather than just treatment of the, health, the illness, it's better to be most of 80 or 85 percent of the disease in Africa, particularly in our case, it's preventive. So we have to work. We are devising a strategy, a policy in that regard, and it's really working on preventing mechanism because you know that treatment is really it has got its own financial burdens. So what we are focusing is on preventive mechanisms. I had the pleasure of welcoming Miss Adriana Pito to the stage. When I say honesty, what I actually mean is Kaizen reflection and action thanks to self-questioning being honest with yourself and having action that matches your words. And I actually have a question for you, which is, what is your honest voice? What is your dream? Thank you. Words are 10%, sounds are 10% of the communication. There is an entire body language that we need to take into account in order to understand one another. I think it's really about having people who actually believe in you. We need to build solidarity among ourselves and create our own system of values as well. Imagine for a woman with little and five, six kids roaming around her. It would be a nightmare. So the solutions are to be looking into this challenge. We need to look, as in the last, uh, the, the, the one before, the last one, we need to look how to bring laws and systems that the video, the record systems, <coughs> translated into languages that these people can get benefit of after me. How do we bring this? When Australia now talking about the fact now, the liberals, despite their argument of migrants who are blessed to be with us, they're talking about increasing refugee intake from 13,500 to about 18,000. Which means Victoria, as in Victoria alone, we take about 25 to 30% of refugees coming to Australia, which brings, in the current climate, we get three to five, three to 4,000 refugees. And in this, women and children will be about 60, 70%, or more than that. So that is a question. And especially for us, as I said, we have, if not double, triple effort to make. Not one of us made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Becca, um, a shortened version of our name, to represent the interests of migrant communities in Australia to the federal government. So if you have an issue that is affecting your community, that is the responsibility of the federal government, FECA will take that issue and try and bring about change to legislation or to attitudes and so on. But we need to hear your voices. And what I've been really impressed by throughout this conference is the discussions around leadership and around organization. Because organization and leadership is really important in making sure the voices of migrant African communities are heard at the 
levels that can bring about change. Why is this important? Yeah. The government has proposed changes to citizenship that will change the fundamental basis of Australia's multicultural system, of Australia's immigration system. It says that if you want to become a citizen of this country, you need to speak English at level IL-6. That is higher than the level of English required for international students to get into Victoria University. You are directly affected by this, and this is a really important time to have your voice heard through organisations like that. This legislation also says that you will have to wait four more years as a permanent resident before you can even apply for citizenship. So that means jobs are excluded, that you are at greater risk of <coughs> having your permanent residency taken from you. Yeah. It says that the children that we've talked about in this room, who may have had challenges in their youth and fallen on the wrong side of the law, um, but being born in or being born in Australia or coming when they're very very young, will no longer be welcome here. We have to stand up against this. Now, it's very difficult when you're living the life of a migrant to do that. And that's why organizations like Becca are here. That's my inspiration quote. <laughs> what you're going through, I've gone through. How to support the, the girls from a background other than English is called a mutually adaptive learning paradigm. So when I say math, I just mean that. It's adaptive. Finally, my recommendations, and I will stop with that. If you look at number two, it says further inquiry, uh, inquiry could be engaged with science and mathematics teachers of students from a non-English speaking background to investigate ways in which math frame could be employed to support the students to enhance their literacy outcomes in the target subjects. And then, number three, considering the ever-growing technological advancement, the study suggested further research, a future research in literacy intervention project that could harness computers in the EAO reading writing classes to support the learners to write, to learn in English. Uh, I'm a business um... Uh, lady, just been dealing in business for the past 25 years of my life. Hi everyone, my name is Tara Sheikh. I've uh, got a background in leadership and management and currently working on a social enterprise. Hello, my name is Patricia Kimtia. My background is quite diverse. I've actually worked in different sectors, including the corporates, uh, multinationals, and um, over the years worked for myself before actually joining the education sector. Uh, business is, is all about interacting with community and listening, understanding people before you go ahead and move forward in your business. I think the leadership comes from the community, from people around you, before it comes from yourself. Be your role model yourself before you expect people to listen to you. So. Um, have uh, in, in leadership have that skill with you that you're able to listen and be a model for everyone else. If you believe in yourself, if you also use the opportunities that are provided to you, but if they're not provided, go seek those opportunities and create them. And you have to be able to also reinvent yourself when there are times where you actually have failures or challenges to face. Don't give up making a difference and being true to yourself and have that emotional intelligence to know about what you can do but also about your limitations so then you can work with others to work with them and bring them on that journey with you so that's my personal message to you try to make sure that everyone got a plan and from the plan we need to study what we can do to achieve success 
one door closed, we don't give up. We just need, need and seek advice and help from everyone around us that got the knowledge, that got the experience. I'd, uh, I'd say with, with, with any market, the first thing you'd start with is do your research, do your background checks, go down to what you can offer that's different from them. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Naveen, you do need a mentor, you do need that support from someone who's already in the business. But it might not be a niche market, it might be something that distinguishes your personal brand. Now it doesn't have to be a Nike brand, it can be very personalised and I know we've seen very many successful small businesses, especially for uh, women in entrepreneurship and social enterprise. My message would be have confidence in yourself. You know you can do it and take pride in anything you do, don't give up. Something that resonates with me is uh, be the change that you want to see. As a person, you want to be someone that creates impact in this world. And remember that. What do you want to be remembered for? What's your legacy to this world? Whether it is in business or in community. She made a comment on the issue of accent. They are going to ask you maybe where do you come from? <laughs> uh, what have you come here to do? And then they wait for you to say, Oh, my name is um, Paul, um, I'm from Africa, that, that is what they are waiting to hear. But then when you string the sentence in five seconds, then they are shocked. And the next thing is, oh, he has an accent, I couldn't understand him. <laughs> so, don't be aware of those things, and be, just tell them everyone has an accent. When someone asks you where are you from, because obviously you know you look different to what they do, my answer to that fully I'd say, oh, I'm from um, Endeavour Hills, Victoria, or Hyatt, Victoria. Where are you from? Over 230,000 Australians are currently living with chronic hepatitis B. It's a major cause of liver cancer. Chronic hepatitis B proportionately affect prior population, including those born overseas, the Asia Pacific. East and the Sub Sahara Africa region and the health promotion project aiming to empower people living with or at risk of chronic hepatitis B from migrant and refugee backgrounds to prevent transmission, to promote testing, vaccination, and assistive treatment, and to reduce hepatitis B related stigma and discrimination. So, the key factor for the success was the inclusion of our community peer facilitators. Avoiding misinterpretations that sometimes happen in interpreter assisting decisions. And hopefully, you will look into our community participation program and exploring, and then see there's a chance ideally you will become a volunteer or member of the organization, and at the same time, in the future, you might bring that resource into your community and working with people from especially Sub Sahara Africa. Thank you. Matulu and the Dr. Matulu is going to talk about um, women living with HIV and hepatitis. So, who are the ladies? I am a member of the Victorian African Health Action Network. And the VAHAN, as, as it's abbreviated, um, has been raising awareness um, about issues around bloodborne viruses um, and sexually transmitted infections. In Australia, there are many associations or organizations that represent um, different uh, affected populations. Why I joined VAHAN, there was a lack of um, representation or dialogue uh, for by and for African people. Uh, but just uh, for some of you, uh, towards the end of the year in December, World AIDS Day, uh, the Victorian African Health Action Network will be hosting a series of forums. And so if you can please uh, jump on our website and follow us soon, we will also have a social media presence. And going forward, it would be really great to have more uh, African Australians involved in a dialogue um, that's central to our health. Thank you. I'm just going to share with you the findings I did about the vitamin D project. And it's been shown that vitamin D prevents diseases like diabetes, breast cancer, colon cancer. It helps in supporting the immune system. As African women in particular, because of the dark melanin we have, we have some um, issues with producing vitamin D. 
But why is it a problem? How much do we Africans know about this problem? So I'll just tell you a few things about the sources of vitamin D. For the sun, I would encourage you, don't be afraid of the Australian sun. I know always in the media they say the sun causes skin cancer, but our melanin provides protection for us. Okay. Vitamin D is very important for child mm -hmm. development and for brain development. So please, Thank take you. ownership Thank of you. my health. Thank Thank you. You. Why are there so many suicides in the community? A qualitative study, and when you do a qualitative study, really you can explore as much as possible and ask in details information about really issues. So typically, as you know, this um, young people have really gone through the trauma of migrating. As you know, some of these would have migrated to one country or even two before they came here. So coupled with the challenges of settlement, these things are very complex. And our young children or young people, they don't necessarily um, understand it. So overall, we are uh, not summarizing one minute, mm -hmm. but understanding some of these issues which are emerging in our communities and we have heard these issues over and over and over during the summit. These are very important um, community issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just trying to say whether it be a migrant or refugees, we are African. You know, you can never get rid of this term refugee. As soon as you tell someone you're a refugee, they'll never think of you as a doctor, they'll never think of you as this or this or that. And that, unfortunately, is a disadvantage of this label refugee. So, can I please welcome to the stage the Honourable Marsha Thompson, Member of Parliament, representing the Honourable Fiona Richardson, Victorian Minister for Women. Thank you. Congratulations on what I hear has been an incredible, successful. Thank you so much for making the time to come here and be part of this. I think this is very important. Can I acknowledge to Fiona Richardson, the Minister for Women's Affairs, who thought that this was an important summit that should be funded. So I do want to to the Victorian government's commitment, the Victorian government's commitment uh, to. Um, uh, the advancement of women in every sphere, and you will know that we have put an awful lot of money into ensuring that we are tackling the issue of family violence, not just where it occurs, but trying to prevent it. Um, and I know that that was a big topic for your discussions here. Um, you discussed a lot of issues around youth and the, and the struggle with, with dealing with youth, um, and you've used youth to be help part of that solution, and I think that's that's very important. So having young women involved in helping to create this summit is so crucially important. But the most important and pleasurable thing for me is this is a summit by women for women. And I think that's great. I am very fortunate. I'm the member for Footscray and I have a significant African community from Ethiopia, from Somalia, from um, the Sudan, from Eritrea. A quite a diverse African community. I know it is not one community, it is a number of communities. But the thing that excites me most is those strong women who get out and do things, not just for their community, but for the broader community as well. And I see some amazing women of all age groups out there making a difference. And uh, our community, our broader Victorian community, my broader Footscray community, is better for that involvement and I am so pleased to be able to re represent such a multicultural community that works so well together and has a very positive and active African community and African community. To achieve your dreams in Australia is very difficult so um, yeah I'm just grateful once again and I hope there will be more of these kind of um, conferences so we can um, I guess work together and encourage each other. Um, thank you. Well you go to serve world doctors, even if you are going to die tomorrow, they tell you are well. You're okay. So psychologically you feel you are moving. So that cultural component is the most important for me, the elephant in the room. We need to be very active and get involved and take that leadership because 
people who are affected know this, how to deal with the issue and approach it in culturally appropriate manner. I also want to ask that women to please organize this not only for women but also for the African kids. Please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> Yesterday I went home. I didn't shout at my daughter. I talked to her politely. <laughs> but yesterday, when I got home, I opened the door and I hugged her and I said, Oh, what did you learn today? She said, Oh, mommy. But all the time when I say, I go to <laughs> But I agree, discipline is important, rules are important, and the skills to make sure that your children abide by those rules means that you will get those children to grow up as independent, well-adjusted kids. But he, you know, teenage boys don't talk, they grunt. You know, they remember that, that oh, 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 oh. How was your day? Oh. Daughters struggle, sons struggle. The pressure that we put on our kids now is much harder than the pressures I face as a child. And for your children, who happen to be black, it's even harder. But I said, obviously, I can't attend. And she said, no, no, we want non-Africans to come. We want men to come. Mikey, even a child can. No, no, no. We know how to talk to our kids, but in an African way. I think we need to know how to talk to our kids in Western culture. Logistic goddesses of um, the conference. I want to say that Sherry, uh, she's an artist, so she actually painted that. Oh, <laughs> it, it is from your heart, and you're a beautiful, inspiring leader and soul. Myself, I hope to see, to see this initiative grow more than this. We need something that binds us together as a community. It's so important. The most important thing is, you know, the desire and the express need that they want this at least once every year at this level. It is not just about people coming together, but it's about people be feeling and having impact and you know the quality of presenters and presentations was something that people highly remarked on and also I would just encourage people to look at the videos think about how you can be involved next year send through your name at info at African Diaspora Women Summit.org.au and we're going to take it from there yeah this is Dr. Fred it's been a wonderful summit when you have a summit it's the top you're the top you're the summit for women, you're the tops for African women.